Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this guide, we're going to go over the City Planner's Desk. Alright, at the start of these guides, I like to always mention two things. One is that most of this information is available in text form on our wiki at wiki.simsettlements2.com. And the second thing is that if I ever mention something you're not a fan of in the design of the mod, most of the settings in this mod can be changed in our holotape and as you'll see today at the City Planner's Desk. So the City Planner's Desk is one of the most useful tools in Sim Settlements 2. It's first introduced to you in our story in a quest called Who Can ASAM, which is fairly deep into the chapter one portion of the story, but we actually let you have access to the tool immediately. So on subsequent playthroughs, you can make use of it and there's a lot of useful things you can do with it, even if you just stumble upon it before you're told to build one in one of our quests. So you can see under Sim Settlements Furniture, we have this city planner's desk. We can go ahead and place this down here. You'll notice that the symbol shows that it requires a settler. That's not exactly true. You can assign someone to this to make them the city leader, which we'll talk about in another video, but it is not necessary. This is highly useful as a tool for you, the player. So we're gonna go ahead and place one down and we should see immediately that some extra items start getting attached to it. Now, if you find that items do not attach to your city planner's desk, there are one of two possibilities. One is that you've got a bad install of the mod. This can happen with mod managers occasionally with very, very large mods where it fails to update the BA2 file. This would be a thing on PC, not for Xbox players. So if you find that happening on PC, you might have a bad install of the mod. So you might want to try re-downloading. More likely the case, whether you're on Xbox or PC, is that you've got a large amount of script lag. So this can happen uh, especially on lower end systems and Xbox, where if you're working too quickly through SS2 stuff, if you're building lots of city plans, lots of plots in rapid succession, you can start to back up the game with lots of scripts. What we found that helps is generally to just go to a place like Diamond City, or you could even go in just to an interior cell, such as the basement over here behind that house that I'm looking at, and just let your game run. Just leave your game running for a while, and then it will give time for the game to chew through all those scripts that are piled up because the game does limit the amount of script memory and script time to process in every frame of your game. So the faster your computer, the higher frame rate, you actually get better processing on all of your scripts. So if you find that the uh, scripts are slowed down and things like City Planner Desk is not placing their items, it could just be that your game is uh, it has a lot of debt, has a lot of scripts that need to process. So City Planner's Desk is a great way to test if you're sitting on a lot of script lag. All right, so the City Planner's Desk has a number of tools. All those things that appeared on it are going to be various elements you can use to help you manage your settlement. Now the desk itself, you can actually use for crafting. So if we go here and click use, you'll see that the various items that you've unlocked and some that you never had to unlock will be available here for crafting. First up, you can craft new versions of the City Manager Holotape. You'll, know, you'll notice that we have them in a few variations and these are for sorting. So the one with the dash, this will ensure that it appears up at the top of your list of misc objects. The settings is for those folks who are using mods that tag things with little icons. And then of course the traditional City Manager 2078 holotape which is the one that you'll find in the base game in jake's hardware store as well as the one that he hands you or if you're on mcm you can actually get access to the city manager holotape from the mcm menu uh, for the most part whenever we hand you a unique tool in ss2 you can rebuild it in the city planner test this way if you accidentally destroy it or lose track of it you can come in here and build it so you'll find that things like the asam sensors once you have access to that recipe which you get in our main story box of asam sensors those are unlocked during a certain story moment or if you use the hollow tape to cheat access to tools you'll find that a lot of these become available as well tools we have the city manager tools i've shown this in other guides this effectively is a way for people who are not using mcm such as xbox players to get access to a lot of ability to tinker with the mod in real time in addition it actually includes some of the other tools for quick access so this is a useful one to have hotkeyed this is the one I really want to show you guys right now, the Packed City Planner's Desk. And you'll see that we actually have a few different versions of this. There's a few different pieces of art for the City Planner's Desk. 
Now, if we go ahead and build this packed city planners desk, it will create a version in our inventory that we can go into a settlement and drop. This is highly useful if you want to use city plans where you have all the costs disabled and you'd wanna be able to run around and plop these down in settlements. So if you go into your inventory under MISC, you'll see the packed city planners desk. Simply drop that on the ground and we'll set up. So if you have a new settlement you've just established, you can bring one of these along with you, establish it, assign a settler to it, and have a city plan start building. So this is those pick packed city planners desk are a great way to quickly spring up additional settlements without having an excessive amount of resources on your person at all times. All right, the next element of the city planners desk we're going to discuss is the settlement flag. So if you were to click select flag here, a little menu will come up to trade and you'll see a couple of different options here. Now by default, all you'll see in here is American and Empire flag and both will do effectively the same thing, which is set the American flag as your dynamic flag or as your settlement flag. And we'll talk about what that means in just a moment. I do wanna talk briefly about Empire flag. So this is something that comes up later in the story, but our system puts it in immediately. There's an opportunity you'll have to set a single flag that covers all of your settlements at once. And if you set that, but chose a different flag for the local settlement, so for example, Example, let's say we chose American for this settlement and then we change our mind later and we want to have it use the same flag as all of our other settlements, you would choose this empire flag. So at the beginning of the game, this doesn't really mean anything, but later on you'll understand why when you get deeper into the story. Now, the different flags that are available are determined by who you know in the game. So as you meet different factions and get to certain quest thresholds, you'll get their flags. If you're using SS2 Extended and you've got access to some of the vanilla or DLC companions, you'll find that after you make them a city leader and build a city plan with them, that you unlock a custom flag for each of them. And of course, add-on packs add a ton of different flag options as well. So there are bottomless amounts of flags you can get. There are add-on packs specifically dedicated to flags so you can have more options here. But once you select one of the flags, so we'll go ahead and select Minutemen here and hit accept and confirm the trade. When we exit out, you'll find that a variety of flags throughout the game will update to show the new colors you've chosen. So those are called dynamic flags. These will often appear in building plans. So martial plots in municipal plots in particular will have them generally in every design. Uh, the martial plot actually uses by default a power pole that has a flag on it. You can actually build that as well. So let me show you where you build these manually if you don't wanna rely on plots to display those. So if you go under the decoration section and then dynamic flags you'll see a whole bunch of options now when you build these by default they will start out with whatever the settlement flag is so before you mess with that option and change it to something else it would just show the american flag but because i've already chosen the the Minutemen flag, as soon as I build one of these, it is going to show the Minutemen colors. Now, once I exit out of workshop mode, that teal marker will disappear and it will just show the Minutemen and then I can build as many of these as I want and they will all update accordingly. So we have a variety of different options, basically using a lot of the meshes that were available in the base game with flags on them. And uh, when we go ahead and exit out of here, you can see if the flickering stops and now it is Minutemen flag. Go. And of oh, course, if we switch this robots. back to American flag, that will update all of those as well. And in addition to those, you can actually build under the power section. So if we go down here to power, we also have the settlement flagpole wired, and this will also show the appropriate flag. So you have a lot of different options to show those, show those flags, and then you can pick from your desk which one you want to display, and it will update all of them, including those on plots. Next up on the list is this little blueprint which says Manage City. If you activate this, you will get a lot of information here. You'll see the name of the city, what type it is within your empire, the current level if you're using a city plan. If you've assigned a leader like I have, you'll see that it tells you who they're led by. So in this case, it's just Settler. Then you'll have the option to take a tour. This will actually use our cinematic mode to fly you around the settlement and to let you see. Here we can choose a city plan to trigger automatic building. We can replace the city leader, which there will be a dedicated video to city leaders and city plans as well. And we can dismiss the city leader. So when you use these city leader menus, so the replace city leader, or if I didn't have someone assigned, it would be assigned city leader. The menu will just show the unique NPCs that have what we call leader cards. Again, that will explain in another video. So if you don't find that your settlers are showing up in this list, that is normal. That means that that particular settler doesn't have a special card that defines them 
as a leader. Again, that will all make sense after you launch a future video, uh, but the way to assign or reassign a settler manually that doesn't have what we call a leader card, you basically come into workshop mode. So we'll go ahead and find a random settler here. We'll grab this one and bring them over here and assign them directly to the city planner's desk. And this will put them in charge of that settlement. So we should get a pop up in a second. Settlers now in charge of Sanctuary Hills. And now the desk will show that it's assigned. And then it will immediately attempt to build a city plan, but it gives you a warning. So you have to choose yes, tear it all down if you want it to do so. We're gonna go ahead and say no here. We don't want a city plan. Uh, there are a variety of benefits to having a settler as the leader and some mechanics that require a leader in a settlement. But for now, we're gonna focus on the desk itself. Just wanted to show you guys that you could assign a leader that way. All right, next we're gonna talk about the city resources. This is the little safe just underneath the desk. If you click manage here, you will have three options. If you are unfamiliar with virtual resources, I'm going to be discussing them a lot to talk about this screen. I would highly recommend you go watch the virtual resources video as I'm gonna mention several things from that. So this will allow you to convert items in your inventory into virtual resources that the settlers can use. So if you go to donate items, you can actually hand them things directly from your inventory. For example, we can hand them access junk that we don't need and it will convert it directly into that same type of virtual resources. So in this case, if I donate this hot plate, it will provide two circuitry, one copper and one screw for my settlement. Or if you're playing on category build, it will convert those down into simply four machine parts. And the same goes for other types. So if we donate pencils, we'll convert, we'll get one machine part and one building material. If you're playing on simple, again, it will just combine them together. So in the case of simple, you would get just two scrap resources by donating a pencil. And you can donate as many as you want here, though if you're on a lower end system or on Xbox, I would limit yourself to maybe 10 items at a time because this does trigger a lot of scripts to run simultaneously. And for some players on Xbox and lower end systems, having a lot of scripts hit simultaneously will crash the game for them. So if you find that donation doesn't work when you give it a whole bunch, after you reload from that crash, just donate a handful of items at a time. So we'll go ahead and exit out of there. But if I were to accept the trade, we would get a little pop-up telling us that the settlers were choosing how to use the items. If you've got a large amount of excess caps, you can donate them to the settlement. There are a handful of uses for caps by settlers. If you're playing with operating costs and maintenance costs turned on, these are heavily used. If you are not, then caps will tend to only be used for the soldier mechanics for recruitment and for HQ for a variety of projects and things of that nature. So if you are not playing with any of the options I just mentioned, you don't need to donate caps anytime soon. In fact, generally, your settlers will generate plenty of caps on their own with residential plots alone. So caps is kind of an optional thing and is primarily going to be used by people using the operating cost systems. Now, donate workbench contents is effectively the same as walking over to your settlement workbench, taking all of the items out, and then dropping them in through this interface. So the reason to be aware of that is for the reason I mentioned earlier about crashing on lower end systems and Xbox. This is a risky button to push for you guys if you've got a lot of items in your workbench, but if you're on a mid to high end PC, this is a great time saver. We'll quickly process a ton of items and give them to your settlers. And the reason you might wanna do that is because when you are in your settlement, they can use all of the items from your workbench to build and upgrade plots while you're standing there. But once you leave the settlement, they will only use virtual resources. And we did this so that players would have a little bit more control over which items they have access to versus which ones their settlers have access to. And so some players want to make sure they have access to things so that they can manually build. So they don't want settlers taking all those items while they're away. They want to be able to arrive in a settlement and have resources available. So if you are deciding that you're not going to do much manual building and you have all those resources you might want to donate them through this screen moving on down the desk we have this little drawer down here called building plans which has the setup themes option this will let you control the types of building plans that your settlers will choose from this is highly valuable if you are using a ton of different building add-on packs as you might find that some of them don't match the aesthetic you're looking for and this will let you kind of configure that now i'm not going to go into this in great detail right now just going to show you briefly this screen if you'd like to learn about all of these different settings and how they function go check out the plot customization video which will go into this and the last element of the city planner's desk is the terminal here so when you access this, you might believe that this is just a copy of the City Manager 2078 holotape, and it is to an extent, except that in this engine, 
terminals are more powerful than your pip boy this may have been an oversight we don't know why this is but terminals can do a lot of data display that your pip boy cannot and so there are two additional things you'll find in this menu so the first up is if we go to options and then gameplay you'll find that there's a local settings menu and what this will do is show you a variety of the various options you can find under these other menus that you can change only at the current settlement you're sitting at the desk in. so these options if you were to change them here would only impact the current settlement one of the most important reasons to know about this is that if you assigned a city plan at the current settlement you're in you will find that some of these local settings have been changed for you and that is because when you use a city plan the settlers are in charge of a lot of things so to simulate that we basically just change some of these options around so that you no longer have to think about them but if you have removed the city plan or if you don't want that behavior even after applying a city plan you can come in here and restore the local settings to what you expect or what you want so the local settings is a great way to manipulate things at at the current settlement level next up and this i would argue for players who enjoy city building simulators this is going to be something you're really going to want to know about and that is the report section and what this does is basically exposes all of the numbers that drive our hud and show some things that maybe you couldn't find elsewhere in the mod so for example if we go under the needs report here you will see the detailed numbers of production and what is needed so the production we can obviously see in the vanilla ui you can see the little number next to food at the top of your screen in workshop mode but you don't see the actual need by the settlers in the vanilla game, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. For example, food is needed one per settler, but in SS2, those needs change as you build different things and as you upgrade them, which is heavily discussed in the HUD video. So check that out if you want more information on that. But uh, for those of you guys who are power users, you really wanna know the numbers that drive the various systems. You can find all of those in these various reports. So the needs will show you all of the numbers that drive the status HUD, the Plot report will show you the various plot types you've got built, and you can actually dig down into this quite deep and see the different classes that are built. Uh, if you dig even further into the classes, you can see them broken down uh, by their usage, and you can see how they're actually impacting all of those different needs. So there's a lot of details you can dig in to form a plot report. And then lastly, we've got the production report, which will show you the various resources that are being produced by any of the different plot building classes. So these are very useful for you to dig in and get detailed information about your settlements. All right, hopefully that showed you guys some of the usefulness of the city planner's desk. Keep an eye out for additional guides. We will go over things like city leaders and city plans and future guides so that you guys can learn a little bit more about the utility of the city planner's desk. All right, guys, take care and enjoy the months.